Hello, I'm Michael Francis, Music Director of the Mainly Mozart Festival. It's such a shame that we can't be with you this June for obvious reasons and I'm here on a rather gloomy day in Florida which seems rather appropriate for the June gloom in San Diego, rather in keeping. And this is a series that we've started called Listening with the Maestro, in which I shall present some introductions to pieces of music for you to listen to at home, pieces to bring you joy and peace and all sorts of various things. And the first piece in this series is Rafe Vaughan Williams is The Lark Ascending, which is perennially voted the most popular piece of music in the United Kingdom, and for good reason. And I think at the time that we're going through at the moment with our sense of isolation, with our lockdown, indeed even with curfews, that we are really looking for pieces that give us that sense of nostalgia to perhaps simpler times. It is indeed a difficult period that we are all going through through the pandemic at the moment. So Rafe Vaughan Williams wrote this piece originally in 1914, just on the eve of World War I. And in fact, when he wrote it, he was down on holiday in Margate and he was watching the fleet start to prepare and to head out into Europe. And uh, he was scribbling on some notes and a boy saw him and assumed that he was a German spy. And indeed, he was then arrested by a local Bobby um, and told that what was he up to? Of course, it turned out that he was just writing a wonderful piece of music and indeed the melodies for this glorious piece. It is a solo for violin and orchestra, sometimes called a romance after Beethoven's romances. Then when he went to war, and Ralph, uh, Rafa Williams was 41 in 1914, he went there and he was a stretcher bearer for the Royal Army Medical Corps. So we cannot imagine what he saw on the front line in the medical staff. And when he came back and then after the war in 1919, he revisited this piece and wrote it then for orchestra. It's originally for piano and violin. And you can understand why he was so drawn to it. And then he wrote it actually then in Box Hill, which is an area of Surrey that I know very well, not far from where I lived in the UK. Um, and this is a beautiful area with wonderful nature. And unfortunately, nowadays it is rather um, inundated with mammals every Sunday. If you don't know what a mammal is, it's a middle-aged man in lycra cycling up and down and blocking all the traffic, trying to get fit and burn off their muffin tops. My brother is one of those, by the way. Um, and so, but this area of Box Hill has a, is such tremendous natural beauty. You can see why he was so inspired to fill in the orchestration uh, for this as well. The piece is um, quite short, about 14 minutes long, and it's, it's a wonderful way of flowing. It starts with a, a violin cadenza representing the lark sort of coming down from the ether. And then it goes into this glorious pastoral music in a lilting 6-8, one, dun, 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 which always gives you this bucolic sense of the folk, of the landscape. Ray Fawn Williams loved to collect folk music and just really understand the, 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 the sort of, it's almost like an extension of a constable painting, this idea of the pastoral England. And then after this sort of pastoral music you'll hear in the orchestra, there's another cadenza. Uh, for the violin, there's three cadenzas, which is a passage of music which it almost feels like we're improvising on their own. And we go, and you, then you feel like the lark is joining us into real life, into sort of genial folk music, as if there's peasants or just normal village people together, working together, living, interacting, not socially distancing. And that music, which is in the very simple two, builds up until you hear a little triangle pinging as the violin then shows its majestic quality to imitate the lark with chirruping, with trilling and this glorious interaction. Then the music from the beginning comes back, this time it becomes more impassioned, until at the very end, like a giant palindrome over the piece, we finish with our third cadenza, as the lark then leaves us, as we long for it, poignantly, nostalgically, heading off again once more into the heavens. The lark was becoming increasingly endangered at the time, so I think for Vaughan Williams, this idea of capturing simple life, the simple pleasures of being together, the simple pleasures of observing nature are so poignant. The entire piece is based upon a poem by George Meredith called The Lark Ascending and I shall read it for you now. He rises and begins to round. He drops the silver chain of sound of many links without a break in chirrup, whistle, slur and shake. For singing till his heaven fills tis love of earth that he instills and ever winging up and up our valley is his golden cup, and he the wine which overflows to lift us with him as he goes, till lost on his aerial rings in light, and then the fancy sings. Absolutely glorious music. 
for recordings, I have, there's many wonderful recordings. I think Janine Janssen's is a fabulous one. There's a very famous, perhaps maybe the best recording by Iona Brown and the Academy of St. Martin's in the Fields of Neville Mariner. A Hugh Bean with Adrian Bolt, who conducted the world premiere, is also fantastic. But there's so many. Just choose one on Spotify, iTunes, or maybe you have a CD at home. And then just sit back and just allow this music to waft over you with that warm, gentle summer breeze, so rare often in England. And that's, that sound of, the, of nature just interacting with us, inspiring us to hope and to move forward with it. There is, of course, always that slight poignant aspect of loss with it. And that reminds us of the words of Sigrid Sassoon and reminding us of what was lost uh, in the war as well. Everyone was a bird and the song was wordless. The singing will never be done. This glorious piece of music, so beloved and so appropriate for us right now, as we need hope, we need unity, and at times, of course, we need the simplicity of beauty. Thank you very much.